Greetings Car Doctor channel viewers. Welcome to another installment from the Car Doctor Studios in Anchorage, Alaska. Today, we're gonna do a timing belt and water pump on an 06 Toyota Sienna van. This has a 3.3 liter variable valve timing engine. We're gonna do the water pump timing belt, the idler and tensioner pulleys, and the hydraulic tensioner assembly replacement, along with both serpentine belts. We're gonna drain and refill the cooling system. Uh, the timing belt is recommended uh, to be replaced at 90,000 mile intervals. This vehicle is just short of that. And I personally recommend at this point to do both the timing belt and water pump. You can just inspect the pump, uh, but I found that typically, you know, between 80 and 100,000 miles, they're gonna start leaking. Uh, so it'd be a good time to do them both. Uh, along with the serpentine belts and flush and refill the cooling system so you don't have to mess with it till another 90,000 miles but it'll of course depend on your particular operating conditions the area of the country you're in hot climates or very cold climates can accelerate belt wear and thus under a severe maintenance schedule 90,000 miles is a recommended replacement interval for uh, for like Alaska conditions. So that's why we're here. We're gonna do this. The factory recommended procedure involves removing the wiper cowl subassembly. I'm gonna try to get away without doing that. It's just a clearance issue and uh, you can you can uh, get around that, uh, do a work around, do a little reach around uh, to avoid pulling the cowl assembly and uh, you should be able to get the uh, timing belt water pump just fine. I've purchased a Deco water pump and timing belt kit. It services the water pump, timing belt, the idler and tensioner pulleys, and the hydraulic tensioner assembly. Um, I recommend using a quality new replacement uh, water pump in this case. You just don't want to screw around with the timing belt driven uh, pump. You don't want to, you want don't want that to fail and uh, leave you stranded somewhere. You know some applications, including this engine, are considered interference engines, whereas the timing belt uh, breaks and valve train damage can occur. Uh, I haven't personally seen it on this engine, but I'm sure other people have. Um, you know, and, and one guy will come back and say, oh, I've done it a hundred times and never seen it happen. And the next guy, it does. You know, there's books that will tell you it's an interference engine or non-interference engine. Um, but, you know, here we are at this point where we're doing some preventative maintenance. We're uh, making a preemptive strike on the repairs and we're doing it with quality parts so that we avoid downtime. Uh, you know, in Alaska, you don't want to be stranded up on the Denali Highway uh, come the first snowfall uh, because there's people that didn't live to tell about uh, having a breakdown up there and being unable to make it back out. You know, and they don't find you till the following spring and uh, it's just it's just an ugly way to go. So, uh, you know, it, Alaska and other parts of the country you can find yourself in a place or a situation that you don't want to be stalled out on the side of the road. So all in all, it's a good idea, even if it's just to prevent an unforeseen repair, if not major catastrophic engine damage at the same time by bending valves from uh, having an interference issue. So anyway, an interference issue is when a valve is held open, uh, when the camshaft lobe is, is holding a valve open and the piston comes up and contacts that. When the uh, valve timing uh, stops because the belt snaps and the crank continues to spin and the piston comes up and contacts an open valve, uh, <clears throat> that's an interference problem and likely will result in damaging the uh, valve or the piston or both. So we want to avoid that by doing proper maintenance. Anyway, we're gonna to get to this, and uh, again, I appreciate you coming along for the ride. First, drain the cooling system and disconnect the battery.
I'm going to remove the upper radiator hose. Now I'm going to remove the motor mount. Now I remove the engine ground wire, remove this little resistor from its mounting bracket, and remove the alternator bracket stay that attaches the main motor mount to the alternator bracket. Now I loosen the alternator adjusting bracket, then back off the adjuster, loosen the belt enough to remove the alternator belt. Now I depress the tabs on the wiring harness retainers for the wiring harness that runs above the upper timing cover so that I can reposition the harness away from the covers and allow for removal of the timing covers. Now I remove the bolts fastening the upper timing cover to the engine block face. The upper cover has a total of six bolts. Now remove the upper cover assembly. Mm -hmm. 
Now I am removing the remaining alternator bracket by loosening the main alternator bolt and then removing the nut that secures the other end of the bracket, then removing the bracket by lifting off of the nut and sliding it away from the alternator. Now I remove the main motor mount bolts that I can access from the top. Now I'm going to lift the vehicle. Okay, now that I've got the vehicle raised, I'm going to remove the right front wheel assembly. Now I'm going to remove the inner fender shroud that covers the crank area. Now I'm going to loosen the power steering adjusting bolt so that I can loosen the power steering belt and remove it from the vehicle. Now I'm going to remove the main crank pulley bolt and using my half inch drive air impact to do that. Now remove the crankshaft or balancer pulley assembly. A puller may be required to remove the crank pulley, but in this case, mine was loose enough so that if I just worked it back and forth, I was able to remove it by hand. Now we remove the lower timing cover by removing the bolts that secure it to the block face. I do need to remove the power steering pump adjusting bracket so that I can access one of the bolts behind it for the lower timing cover. Now use an E8 internal torque socket to remove the two studs that pass through the motor mount water pump and enter the block face in order to facilitate removal of the motor mount plate. In this case the lower stud stripped out as I was attempting to remove it but I was able to remove the motor mount plate with just removing the upper stud and the bolts. That allowed me for clearance to ex extract the stud after the plate had been removed and replace it. Now remove the guide and note the position of the guide with the rounded surface towards the belt. For reinstallation. Now reinstall the crankshaft bolt and turn the crankshaft in a clockwise rotation so that the crank gear mark lines up with the mark on the top of the oil pump area. Once you've lined up these marks, lower the vehicle and inspect the marks on the camshaft pulleys to see that they line up. If your camshaft marks are 180 degrees out, then turn the crank an additional 360 degrees clockwise and recheck your marks. If the marks line up properly, now you can remove the timing belt. Now remove the two bolts securing the timing belt tensioner. You can get the hydraulic tensioner off without completely removing the power steering pump. It's a little bit tough to weasel a 12 millimeter six point short socket in the upper bolt position but uh, it's worth the time hassling with that uh, rather than completely removing the power steering pump to gain clearance. Once you've removed the automatic tensioner cylinder assembly, then you can remove the tensioner pulley assembly by inserting a 10 millimeter metric 
hex socket into the retaining bolt and removing. Now you should be able to remove the timing belt. Now remove the two upper bolts uh, between the two cam pulleys securing the black stamp steel inner timing cover. Then go ahead and remove the uh, six remaining nuts and bolts that secure the water pump to the block face. You'll need to slightly pry out on the upper portion of the black stamp steel inner timing cover uh, as you pull out and work the water pump off of the block face and then go ahead and remove your gasket if it's still attached or stuck to the block and then clean your mounting surfaces so basically at this point we just need to reverse the installation procedures to uh, reinstall the water pump and timing belt now install the timing belt in this order first ensure that all your timings are properly aligned then install on the crankshaft pulley up and around the water pump pulley around the left hand or front camshaft then down around the number two idler pulley and over the right hand cam gear and then down around the idler tensioner pulley assembly or idler number one as it's referred to. Now install your tensioner assembly and take note that the tensioner assembly does have a pin that secures the hydraulic push rod in the retracted position. Leave the pin in and coat both of the securing bolts with blue Loctite and install and torque those bolts to 20 foot-pounds torque. Double check your position of your timing marks and if they are in alignment, go ahead and remove the retaining pin on the tensioner assembly. Once you remove the pin for the tensioner assembly, rotate the crankshaft 360 degrees and double check that your marks are in alignment. If the marks are good at this point, then go ahead and reinstall your covers, reinstall your crank pulley, and your belts and go ahead and uh, put your upper radiator hose back on and refill your cooling system so that about wraps up this repair hey just want to encourage you to be safe uh, always do these repairs only if you're competent to do so it's a safety related and major engine component related repair so you want to make sure it's done properly and uh, doesn't leave you stranded or cause major engine damage. The car doctor cannot be responsible for major engine damage should you do an improper repair. So take care, take care to do it right. If not, refer it to a qualified mechanic like myself. If you want to take it to Anchorage, Alaska, the car doctor is here to serve you. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to the Car Doctor channel. Thanks for your subscriptions and all the likes. I appreciate it, and I wish you good luck with your repairs. Have a good one now.